with heavy hearts tonight, our good friend and longtime local 12 anchor, John Lomax, has passed away. For 40 years, he was the heart and soul of this television station because he so freely shared his heart and soul with all of us and all of you. Yeah, we are dedicating much of our time with you tonight in loving tribute to our dear friend, John. Our colleagues who work with John on Good Morning Cincinnati are, as you would expect, just shocked and heartbroken tonight. A short time ago, I spoke with John's longtime co-anchor, Bob Hersod. Hersod, I'm so sorry. I loved him, too. And I know you worked with him even longer than I did. I had such a short stint on a morning show with him 24 years ago, and I, it's one of the highlights of my career after all that time, and I know you feel the same way, Bob. Yeah, he, um, sorry. No. For, for um, um, as important as the, uh, the work was and, uh, what a mentor he was to me, he was like, uh, you know, he was kind of like a second, a second dad to me, you know, a lot. And, uh, when I, when I lost my dad, uh, I can remember turning to John, you know, about, about things that I, uh, I used to, uh, turn my dad for, you know, and, uh, questions and things. And, uh, so yeah, it, I tried all, I just, I, I saw him a couple, maybe three weeks ago, we, you know, group of us from the morning show got together, had lunch. Um, he seemed great. He was happy spending so much time with the grandkids, you know, and things like that. And uh, I'm texting him this weekend because Kentucky was playing Tennessee. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted him to know, you know, he's always, he's always welcome to show up and hang out with my family, but not to do it in, in volunteer orange <laughs> on Saturday. But, uh, yeah. I, I remember you talking about when he retired about how he was so fatherly towards you and he knew your kids so well. He watched your kids grow up and he gave you advice and he was so proud of your kids and his kids. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he remembers distinctly when my youngest was born because I had, I had uh, started on the morning show by that point. And so he, he literally has, has, seen, has seen Emma grow up you know, and we just always asked me how all the kids were doing. How's Chloe doing? How's Sam doing? How's Danny doing? And, um, you know, they, they each got, you know, little moments here and there to, to interact with, with him themselves over the years. And uh, I know they, they, they think that's really special. Um, that time they, they got and they, they certainly have, me, have heard me tell stories about him <laughs> enough times that they I'm sure they felt like they knew him even even more than they did just by virtue of the stories that I that I would tell yeah you get so close to on those morning shows and I haven't had a chance to say I'm sorry to you because I, I, I haven't seen you tonight um, and you work so closely on the morning show and it's it's a special bond and he was a special man he was I, I'm not right yeah. now I, yeah. I, I, I just found out in the past half hour like, like all of us and I I mean and, and I shared the sentiments of Bob there <laughs> he was like father to us yeah. on the show and I've this is his yeah, pocket square pocket square and um, you know if, if he, he gifted many of these I assume you yeah. got yeah. like a tie Bob's got some ties yeah um, and so we, we you know we're, we're gonna have these things to remember him by um but he was just he was a father to everyone we called him the godfather mm -hmm. here for good reason at the station for good reason because you can go to him for anything any level of advice you needed whether it had to do with what we do mm -hmm. as a job whether it had to do with family with with you know raising kids um with, with anything, with something going on at your house, you know, something breaking at your house that you need to fix. I mean, whatever it was, he was just such a fatherly figure to to many of us here at the station. And Paula, you, you pointed out too that, you know, on mornings, 
You know, you're, you're in there together early mornings with with your coworkers for hours on end because we're on air for so long in the morning. And you better love the people that you're working with in the morning. And and thankfully, um, you know, he, he loved me or came yeah, back. Right, 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 right. <laughs> because we 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 had that that relationship and and I, I told Tim Garrity, our news director, this a, a few minutes ago. I, I would not be in the vision I am here at this television station if it was not for that man. Mm -hmm. And the advice that he gave me over the years, um, the things that, that he confided in me that I confided in him, and we all had such a powerful bond with him. And um, I, I'm, I'm just numb to, tonight, guys. I have a handful of words. And I think when I walked in and I heard the news, I felt the same way. Like, Paula was saying, it didn't register at first. You were thinking, like, wait, what was said? My brain could not process what I was being told. Yeah. And I didn't work with him nearly as long as either of you did. But the thing that sticks out to me, we had the opportunity to walk with him in his final opening day parade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously the news was out at that time that he was going to be retiring. And to see the outpouring of love from yeah. every yeah. single yeah. person along the parade route that day was unbelievable. People were yelling out, enjoy retirement. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And he was taking it all in. And he just was enjoying that he moment. Was. And people just were so excited to see him. Uh, and I remember him seeing an event where he got the Lifetime Achievement Award. He'd been retired for maybe six to eight months by at this point. Uh, and he got up there, and I think they gave him maybe like five or seven minutes to speak, and he went on for like 20. And he said, don't give a former uh, TV reporter a microphone and put a time limit on it. Uh, but he was just telling stories and having such a good time, and everyone was captivated. And I can't not think about Cammie right Me now. Too. Me too. She loved Mr. Lomax. Yeah. I, you know. I, I think the um, love everyone had for him, and, and they, they spoke about it at his retirement. They spoke about it on the air um, on his last day. And I think people could feel that it was real. But oh, I can't yeah. emphasize enough how he really, well, this is a family, yeah. and he was the head of that family. Yes. And it was just, not only um, personally, but Bob Herzog and I talked about this. It sounds so simple to say he was so smart. But he was. He was so <laughs> right. Well, he was a national merit scholar. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So. Yeah. 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 Deep he was extremely intelligent. On so many topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music. I, I said to Bob, he could have been a musician, an engineer, and we are thankful he became a journalist. Yes. And you talk about the opening day when mm -hmm. you retired. That was the last hug. I, had, I think you got it on video, Paula, so I, have it. I, I have hope it. we can yeah. eventually um, you know, share that, and I'll share it on my Facebook. But that was, I saw them, yeah. we're in the middle of the street, mm -hmm. and, and that was my reaction, you know, just to, just to hug him. And uh, that was the last one that I had with him, you know, unfortunately. But boy, I hope I'll cherish those memories. Uh, Our hearts certainly go out to this family. Uh, everyone in the community and the, the morning show and the, and the morning will be here to help them through it if they, if they need it. I know they're going to want to talk about him, though, and, and share those memories and, and how they all got through those early mornings together and the storms and, and, and never, he never lost his temper. I don't know if you saw, I, he was so calm. Even when he was upset, he was level. Yeah, level. He stayed, Le he stayed yeah, level. He had opinions, he wanted it right, but, but level. I'm telling you, he was the glue that held that morning show together for so many years. Yeah. Just his steady presence, his his advice, his wisdom that, that he offered. And, and in many cases, you know, he, he helped the station through so much over so many years. And, um, you know, his, his, his um, love for all of us here was, was always felt uh, strongly. And, and his love for this community, you know, having been here so long and he was just universally loved by so many. And, um, you know, when you're on television, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever heard someone say um, a bad thing about no. Mr. Lomax. No. I mean, you said that doesn't often happen, right? Like Very people, good people just loved him, they embraced him. And he was like what you saw on TV is yep. what it was yep. in real life. He had a very simple life. It was about family. 
um, if he collected anything, it was those ties that he gave away. <laughs> and his love of photography. <laughs> yes. Yes. He loved cars, but he, he didn't have a lot of fancy cars, but he loved them. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah he was a car man. That's for yeah. sure. Well, thank you for sharing your memories. Um, the news broke really just in the past hour, so we're just all processing this and hearing from so many of you sending your thoughts and prayers for John's wife, daughter, son, and grandchildren, and for the local 12 family as well. Know that that is so appreciated by all of us. And we're going to have more coverage on Local 12 News Live at 11. And of course, tomorrow's edition of Good Morning Cincinnati will be no doubt filled with memories as we celebrate our friends. John Lomax, great gentleman for all the greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition of godly principles. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in Jesus' sight. Fairhaven, right on the street corner here. Fairhaven Rescue Mission 360. 
I think it's 360 or 260, 260. Here. Where Randy and I'll be on the 22nd of this month, the fourth Friday, for 30 years. And uh, on the 26th of April, Randy might not be able to make it, so I don't know if I'll be able to come down by myself physically or not. Have to wait and see. Maybe the Robinsons can come down with me or somebody else. Have to check that out and see. Friday fish fry. That fish is looks pretty good. I had to try that out myself. Are you ready? And you gotta know Jesus. Are you ready for Jesus? He's knocking on everybody's door. But you gotta reach down and turn that knob and invite him into your heart.
Drop something off. Okay. my first drive out since being in the hospital downtown the beauty of downtown Covington Justice Center.
and Local 12 anger, John Lomax has passed away. For 40 years, he was the heart and soul of this television station because he so freely shared his heart and soul with all of us and all of you. Yeah, we are dedicating much of our time with you tonight in loving tribute to our dear friend, John. Our colleagues who work with John on Good Morning Cincinnati are, as you would expect, just shocked and heartbroken tonight. A short time ago, I spoke with John's longtime co-anchor, Bob Herzog. Herzog, I'm so sorry. I loved him, too. And I know you worked with him even longer than I did. I had such a short stint on a morning show with him 24 years ago, and I, it's one of the highlights of my career after all that time, and I know you feel the same way, Bob. Yeah, he, um... Sorry. No. For, for um, um, as important as the, uh, the work was and uh, what a mentor he was to me, he was like, uh, you know, he was kind of like a second, a second dad to me, you know, a lot. And uh, when I when I lost my dad, uh, I can remember <clears throat> turning to John, you know, about about things that I uh, I used to uh, turn to my dad for, you know, and uh, questions and things. And uh, so, yeah. I, I, oh, I just, I, I saw him a couple, maybe three weeks ago. We, you know, a group of us from the morning show got together had lunch. Um, he seemed great. He was happy. Spending so much time with the grandkids, you know, and things like that. And uh, I'm texting him this weekend because Kentucky was playing Tennessee. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted him to know, you know, he's always... He's always welcome to show up and hang out with my family, but not to do it in, in volunteer orange <laughs> on Saturday. But, uh, yeah. I, I remember you talking about him when he retired about how he was so fatherly towards you. And he knew your kids so well. He watched your kids grow up and he gave you advice. And he was so proud of your kids and his kids. Yeah, he... Uh, you know, he remembers distinctly when my youngest was born because I had, I had uh, started on the morning show by that point, and so he, he literally has has seen has seen Emma grow up, you know, and would just always ask me how all the kids were doing, how's Chloe doing, how's Sam doing, how's Daddy doing, and um, you know, they they each got, you know, little moments here and there to to interact with with him themselves over the years and uh i know they 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 think that's really special um that time they they got and they they certainly have me have heard me tell stories about him <laughs> enough times that they i'm sure they felt like they knew him even even more than they did just by virtue of the stories that i that i would tell <laughs> You get so close to on those morning shows, and I haven't had a chance to say I'm sorry to you, because uh, I, I haven't seen you tonight, um, and you work so closely on the morning show, and it's it's a special bond, and he was a special man. He was. I, I'm not a man right yeah. now. I, yeah. I, I, I just found out in the past half hour, like, like all of us, and I, I mean, and, and I share the sentiments of Bob there. He was like father to us yeah. on the show, and I've, this is his. Yeah, the pocket square. Pocket square. And, um, you know, and he, he gifted many of these. I got a few. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Bob's got some ties. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, you know, we're, we're going to have these things to remember him by. Um, but he was just, he was a father to everyone. We called him the godfather mm -hmm. here. For good reason. At the station. For good reason. Because you can go to him for anything, any level of advice you needed, whether it had to do with what we do as a job, whether it had to do with family, with, with you know, raising kids, um, with, with anything, with something going on at your house, you know, something breaking at your house that you need to fix, I mean, whatever it was, he was just such a fatherly figure to, to many of us here at the station. And Paula, you, you pointed out too that you know, on mornings, you know, you're in there together, early mornings, 
with, with your coworkers for hours on end, because we're on air for so long in the morning, and you better love the people mm-hmm. that you're working with mm-hmm. in the morning. And, and thankfully, um, you know, he, he loved me, or came to me. Because we, we, we had that, that relationship, and I, I told Tim Garrity, our news director, this a, a few minutes ago, I, I would not be in the vision I am here at this television station if it was not for that man. Mm-hmm. And the advice that he gave me over the years, um, the things that, that he confided in me that I confided in him. And we all had such a powerful bond with him. And um, I, I'm, I'm just numb to, to that, guys. I have a lot of words. I think when I walked in and I heard the news, I felt the same way. Like, Paula was saying, it didn't register at first. You were thinking, like, wait, what was said? My brain could not process what I was being told. Yeah, and and I didn't work with him nearly as long as either of you did, but the thing that sticks out to me, we had the opportunity to walk with him in his final opening day parade. Um, And obviously the news was out at that time that he was going to be retiring. And to see the outpouring of love from every single person along the parade route that day, was unbelievable. People were yelling out, enjoy retirement. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And he was taking it all in. And he just was enjoying that he moment. Was. And people just were so excited to see him. Uh, and I remember him seeing an event where he got the Lifetime Achievement Award. He'd been retired for maybe six to eight months by at this point. Uh, and he got up there, and I think they gave him maybe like five or seven minutes to speak, and he went on for like 20. <laughs> and he said, don't give a former uh, TV reporter a microphone and put a time limit on it. Uh, but he was just telling stories and having such a good time. And everyone was captivated. And I can't not think about Cammie right now. Me too. Because she loved Mr. Lomax. Yeah. You know. I I think the um, love everyone had for him, and they they spoke about it at his retirement. They spoke about it on the air um, on his last day. And I think people could feel that it was real. But I can't emphasize enough how he really, this is a family, and he was the head of that family. And it was just, not only... um, Personally, but Bob Herzog and I talked about this. It sounds so simple to say he was so smart. But he was. He was so bright. <laughs> well, he was a National Merit Scholar. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So. Yeah. 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 Deep he levels was extremely around intelligent. On so many topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music. I, I said to Bob, he could have been a musician, an engineer, and we are thankful he became a journalist. Yes. And you talk about the opening day mm-hmm. when you retired. That was the last hug I had. I think you got it on video, Paula, so I, have it. I, I have hope it. we can yeah. eventually um, you know, share that, and I'll share it on my Facebook. But that was, I saw them, yeah. we're in the middle of the street, mm-hmm. and and that was my reaction, you know, just to, just to hug him. And uh, that was the last one that I had with him, you know, unfortunately. But, boy, I hope I'll cherish those memories. And, uh, our hearts certainly go out to this family. Uh, everyone in the community and the, the morning show in the, in the morning will be here to help them through it if they, they need it. I know they're going to want to talk about him, though, and, and share those memories and, and how they all got through those early mornings together and the storms and, and, and never, he never lost his temper. I don't know if you saw, I, he was so calm. Even when he was upset, he was level. Level. He stayed, Le- he stayed yeah, level. He had opinions, he wanted it right, but, but level. I'm telling you, he was the glue that held that morning show together for so many years. Yeah. Just his steady presence, his his advice, his wisdom that, that he offered. And, and in many cases, you know, he, he helped the station through so much over so many years. And, um, you know, his, his, his um, love for all of us here was, was always felt uh, strongly. And, and his love for this community, you know, having been here so long and he was just universally loved by so many. And, um, you know, when you're on television, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> I, I, no, no, say, no. I don't think I've ever heard someone say um, a bad thing about Mr. Lomax. No. I mean, you said that doesn't often happen, right? Like Very people, good people just loved him, they embraced him. And he was like what you saw on TV is yep. what it was yep. in real life. He had a very simple life. It was about family. 
Um, if he collected anything, it was those ties that he gave away. <laughs> and his love of photography. <laughs> love yes. photography. He loved cars, but he, he didn't have a lot of fancy cars, but he loved them. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. he was a car man. That's for yeah. sure. Well, thank you for sharing your memories. Um, the news broke really just in the past hour, so we're just all processing this and hearing from so many of you sending your thoughts and prayers for John's wife, daughter, son, and grandchildren, and for the local 12 family as well. Know that that is so appreciated by all of us. And we're going to have more coverage on Local 12 News Live at 11. And of course, tomorrow's edition of Good Morning Cincinnati will be no doubt filled with memories as we celebrate our friends. John Lomax, great gentleman, for all the greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition of godly principles. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in Jesus' sight. Fairhaven, right on the street corner here. Fairhaven Rescue Mission 360. I think it's 360 or 260. 260. Here. Where Randy and I'll be on the 22nd of this month, the fourth Friday, for 30 years. And uh, on the 26th of April, Randy might not be able to make it, so I don't know if I'll be able to come down by myself physically or not. Have to wait and see. Maybe the Robinsons can come down with me or somebody else. Have to check that out and see.
Friday fish fry. That fish is looks pretty good. I get to try that out myself. Are you ready? And you gotta know Jesus. Are you ready for Jesus? He's knocking on everybody's door. But you gotta reach down and turn that knob and invite him into your heart. Drop something off. Okay. my first drive out since being in the hospital downtown
beauty of downtown Tevington. Justice Center.
Yeah. This is a song that I used to sing to the students that I had when I had substitute taught. Now, I had a goal in mind when I did all of this substitute teaching. I substituted, taught over in Cincinnati schools, all of Campbell County, all of Kenton County, all of Boone County, Covington schools, and Beechwood school. And, and why did I do so many different school systems? Because I knew I was going to run for superintendent of education for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I did in 1992 and was elected and the first person elected to a statewide office from Northern Kentucky in over 70 years. And what did I do? What did I do? I did this. I sang a little song. Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. A muscle and blood and skin and bones a mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load 16 tons, and what did you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. San Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. I was born one morning, it was drizzling rain. Fighting and trouble was my middle name. I was raised in a cane brick by an old mama line. There ain't no honky tonk woman make me walk the line. Except Miss June, except Miss June, except Miss June. I was born more morning, it was drizzling rain. Fighting and trouble was my middle name. I was raised in a cane brick by an old mama line. There ain't no honky tonk woman make me walk the line. You load 16 tons. And what did you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. San Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Now I'd look out at those students, and I'd say to them, We got 40 minutes in this class for me. We got 10 minutes in this class for you. I won't mess with your 10 minutes if you don't mess with my 40. Because if you mess with it, then I'd jump up on the desk. And I'd stand up on the desk and snapping my fingers and I'd say, If you see me coming, better step aside. A lot of men didn't and a lot of men died. One fist of iron, the other of steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. You load 16 tons, and what did you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. San Peter, don't you call me, cause... I can't go, I owe my soul to the company store. Oh, now that was a Tennessee Ernie Ford sang that song. Yeah. And it was written by a good old Kentucky boy by the name of Merle Travis from down in Muhlenberg County. Really? That's the truth. Oh, that's a God's I've honest heard that truth. Before. That's all now, I since you're a Christian, ladies, and you like Christian songs, you got time for one more? I do. Well, there's one here that I think you'd love. Now, I learned this one from down at the Billy Graham Crusade in 1956 when I went down there on a little mm -hmm. rickety church bus from a little one-room Baptist church out of Kenton Station. There were four deacons that went down there with us kids, me and my little sister, about five years younger than me. She was a school teacher also, taught in four different states, the first grade. And those deacons were Vernon Likens, John Grisell, Walter Roden, and Carl Covey, Mr. Covey. And the minister's name was Kerger, and his wife's name was Polly. They took that old rickety church bus and drove it all the way down to Louisville, Kentucky with us kids to hear the Billy Graham crusade. And guess what in the audience was? my best friends today and the gentleman that married us. His name was Gil Hammond. And they now own, for the last 32 years, the Christian radio station out of, out of Falmouth, Kentucky. Oh. Tri-State Gospel. Yeah. Gil and Jan Hammond. 107.5 FM. That's right, 107.5 <laughs> FM on the radio. And Falmouth, Kentucky. And I'll tell you what. He was in the audience, and unbeknownst to me, I didn't find out until 1970 
when I was elected president of the Education Association at Erlanger Lloyd and Ellesmere School Systems. And then Gil was, had taught at Beechwood for 10 years. And we became fast friends because uh, I helped then work to help education across the state for the rest of my career. Aww. And the song I learned from Billy Graham was George Beverly Shea and Cliff Barrows, who signed in my Bible, and his song was, I'd Rather Have Jesus, and it goes like this. And this is what I say to all the politicians that run from both parties. The most important thing you can do in life, when Jesus knocks on your door, answer the door, turn the knob and invite him into your heart and make a U-turn in life. Yep. And when you make that U-turn in life, my little sister and I come home and we were baptized she was baptized in Visalia Baptist Church. I was baptized in the Licking River, believe it or not, yeah. back in those days. Yeah. And I sang this song as a young man in Davu Park's Amphitheater for the big youth night. And it goes like this. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. And that's a little bit of that song I'd rather have Jesus. I love that. Oh, I love you. And Where's your name is? I'm Kim. Kim? Uh -huh. And Dr. Dr. Casitas. Dr. Casitas from Greece? Yes. What a wonderful visit with him. Yes. We love him very much. Yes. And he did a wonderful job on my heart. I'm sure you've seen this picture. Oh, yeah. So what's missing in the picture? The door handle. There's no door knob. Uh -huh. That being who's on the inside of the door has to enter it in. Yeah. Now let me take yeah. a picture of the picture. Oh my goodness. Yes. Ain't that over here? John, and I'll take a picture of the picture. To to work. Now you see here? No. There's exactly what Miss June is talking about. And she is Miss June because June means forever youthful. That's me. I'm but it did take me four years to convince her to marry me. Wow. It was not an easy task. And the only reason that she did was because God told her. There goes your husband out the door. This is true. <laughs> yes. When I first met her. Right, okay, that's that story. I'll have to sing that one and tell you about that one later, that's folks. Right. Travels with Dr. John Stevenson on YouTube and Facebook. Oh. Join us out there and you'll learn some lessons in the history okay. of Kentucky and its counties. And on our honeymoon is out there and all the other stories. Bye-bye right. now. You're not on the video. Bye-bye so Love quick. you, love you, love you. There. Okay. <laughs>
Life often brings us along certain pathways of love. And uh, in my 80 years, I've seen a lot of different individuals and I have watched their actions in life. And this is one gentleman who I've known now probably for several decades. I'd say probably about 30 some years, huh, Jack? Well, 23. 23 years. Yeah. And I will tell you something, folks. He's a friend indeed, because he's a friend indeed. And uh, I just happen to love him. Jack Williams. And uh, I'm proud that every once in a while, I get to use his uh, website, which is BegottenSon.com, www.BegottenSon.com. And I say praise the Lord for it. It's a wonderful website that anybody and everybody can enjoy and learn from and grow with. And uh, he works hard to keep it up and to do a good job with it. And I'm very proud of him. We both try to help. WIOK 107.5 FM on the radio dial. Post Office Box 50, Falmouth, Kentucky, 41040 zip code. And you can see my YouTube channel on travels with Dr. John Stevenson on YouTube. Or my two Facebook pages, John Stevenson and John A. Stevenson. And uh, remember, the whole thing resolves around, are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? He knocks on everybody's door. But we must reach down, turn the knob, and invite him into our own hearts. He's willing to come, but the doorknob's on our side. And then his old minister said many years ago, Harold Pike, you got to turn around and make a U-turn in life. And that's what it is all about. Thank you, and nice to be with you, and nice to have Jack as a friend and helping me put some things together. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition of godly principles. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in Jesus' sight. Mm -hmm. Amen. John Stevenson here, 859-750-0000. Jack, any words to say? See you all in heaven, I reckon. Reckon, that's good enough. Amen. <laughs>